A very good afternoon to all the viewers. Welcome back to BW People HR Voices. Today, we are joined by Dr. G.P. Rao, the founder and managing partner of GPR HR Consulting. Dr. Rao has spent over 37 years in HR and general management with SAIL, JK Group, Billa Group and Reliance Group in India and Malaysia. He's also the former National Secretary of the National HRD Network and the current Zonal Chair for Rotary International and Senior Area Director for Business Network International. Firstly, welcome, Dr. Rao. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Savi. Thank you so much. So for all the viewers, today's topic for discussion is the power and impact of listening leadership on employees and how it affects the workplace in general. So Dr. Rao, let's start with understanding what is listening leadership and how does it impact the decision making process within the organization? Uh, in simple words, uh, the leaders, when they listen to the people, whether it's employee or a customer or a vendor, any stakeholder. So we call him a listening leader. It's a simple process of uh, lending our ears, uh, taking feedback, uh, hearing them out, uh, taking their reports, uh, taking their views. Uh, it's all about listening. And uh, when they do listen, the decision making becomes effective. Because the moment you listen, people will feel integrated. They get uh, the feeling of inclusion. The moment they get included and in integrated, even if the decision may not be up to their taste or to their liking, they'll still watch for the decision and they will work heartily while implementing it. This way, when the leaders consult others, in the, at the time of decision making, through the process of this powerful tool called listening, the decision making is going to be very, very effective. Right. So, um, sir, sometimes it happens that employees are not satisfied with the decision because at the end, the decision is of the leader, whether uh, the employees consent with the decision or not. Sometimes the employees, they do not consent with the decision. So how... Can, uh, in these situations, the leaders satisfy the employees and how can they encourage them to believe in what the leaders are actually deciding for the firm? So it's a very good question, very good point. Often we come across this situation. So at this stage, the listening leaders follow something called fair process. Okay. They do two things. They consult people who are likely to be affected by a decision before the decision is taken. Only those people. You don't want to consult everybody. Number two, you take a judicious decision weighing the pros and cons. And then once you take a decision, communicate to all those people with the rationale for taking a decision this way, that way. When you do that, people will feel that the fair process has been followed. It They also appreciate Every time, everybody's views may not be able to be accommodated. So they will respect this, this process called fair process. Right. So Dr. Rao, what is the correlation between listening leadership and the employee retention rates in the organization? Oh, I think it is very, very positive. I come across uh, leaders. Uh, I'm just using a Hindi word. They all are very strong in something called Vyavahar. And they also believe and they see that Vyavahar Acha Hoga, the Vyavahar Apna Apna Acha Hoga. To just put it in, translate that, if somebody's behavior, somebody's culture assimilation, somebody's people orientation is stronger, so his business will follow. So most business people do that. So retention is a business imperative of any listening leader. So when people, when you listen to people, their connectivity improves. Yeah. There is a sense of belonging. No, it's a apna pan, no. They own a company. So in times of a difference of opinion or at times of a distress, at the time of uh, feeling of not being uh, heard, 
even at those extreme situations, they will use that test that do, am I a part of this organization? So the superiors have all, always respected us, provided the grace and space in this organization. So I must be with this organization as far as possible, as long as possible. So it's a very, very clear correlation that the, the leadership is a listening leadership there the employer retention is higher and higher. Right. So how does it help to nurture the high potential employees at the organization? See, uh, it's a typical character of high potential employees. They have a point to make. Right. They have a suggestion to give. They have an idea to experiment. Mm. They would like to be more independent. They want empowerment. All this can be met with one single tool available with the leader that hear them out, listen to their point of view, listen to their idea. So by listening to them, you make them feel more important. They, they get all the three vibes of grace, space and peace in the organization. So it's a wonderful, uh, not only feeling, it's a wonderful benefit to a high potential employee in an organization where they are heard and the leaders listen to them. So it's a very good uh, tool uh, in the hands of the leaders in retaining and also leveraging high potential employees, not only retaining, leveraging them. Definitely a great perspective. So Dr. Rao, my next question is that in what ways does listening leadership contribute towards creating an inclusive and culturally sensitive work environment? Actually, it is uh, it's a cause and effect uh, relationship it has got. Right. If you build a great culture, inclusive culture, enabling culture, cordial culture, you produce leaders and managers. They listen. The other way around is when you create a culture or nurture a culture or some leaders make a difference to an organization, they, they while listening to them, so they are contributing in creating a culture where people feel respected. That's a very, very important. There is an empathy. People get that feeling of empowerment, feeling the, get the feeling of support. And the, the hierarchy is available there for ventilating our grievance, seeking a help, trying out an idea. So this will be a great culture that leaders will build. So I am sure listen, more and more listening leaders we produce and have, more and organizations will have a more enabling, cordial, conducive work culture in the organization in the long run it makes adds to the productivity retention happiness of people happiness of people. definitely i agree so we've spoken about uh, creating an inclusive environment where diverse voices are very important in today's state but uh, what about ethical values ethical dilemmas that occur in organizations how can leaders practice this um, concept of listening leadership that ensures that the ethical values are also incorporated in decision making process and that they come out of the ethical dilemmas that happen. See, the best way to test or create or ensure an ethical culture and organization is to ensure that karma is based on dharma. Mm -hmm. The duty that we do as a professional, as a colleague or an employee or a boss or a subordinate or a vendor or a supplier, if the duty is based on the principles of dharma, that is being transparent, being trustworthy, being helpful, being synergetic, being collaborative, being empathetic, all those values if you follow, we call it a dharma-based karma. So by actually doing this, if you are following this, 
the divergent cultures will get integrated. See, diversity is a reality. Whether it is a culture diversity or a gender diversity or an age diversity or even a diversity of thinking process, that is, is a reality. But a good leaders, by practicing these principles of dharma being transparent, trustworthy, ethical, unbiased, they hear them out. Everybody has got an opportunity to make a point, ventilate a feeling, giving their opinion or their side, letting others know their perspective. If these are all encouraged by the listening leaders, people will all get inclusive, the feeling of inclusion, and then oneness, the synergy, the siloless organization is will be easier getting implemented in organization. So, so it's a great uh, tool uh, in the hands of a leader. By being very listening, you are also creating an ethical organization where people from different interest or different thought process or a different backgrounds, they all will get that feeling of being one and they get integrated. integrated. Right. So, Dr. Rao, this is from the employee's perspective. But what about, you know, lately we're seeing so many large organizations, they are cutting off employees, they're laying off employees. So in such cases, the employers, the HR leaders, they face the ethical dilemmas. So, you know, how do they ensure that the process is easier and it's, you know, easy for the employees to go? Yeah, I think uh, all managers face this dilemma. Right. HR managers face it more often. When you take tough decisions, the, the employee will accept a tougher decision, an adverse decision, happily, if he believes that the organization has no other alternative than this. And the alternative the organization is not biased, right. not biased. And I have seen in my own career, we were getting 38% of a particular company separated on account of a restructuring. Many of them worked with us as part-time trainers to train the remaining people to take higher responsibility or larger responsibility. All this was possible because we developed the trust and transparency in the decision making, communicating the decision and communicating the parameters for who is in, who is out and then taking care of those parting employees to the extent possible. You can't give them salary for life, but you can help them in getting a suitable job, help them in investing what they get from us in terms of compensation, taking care of their employee needs, being more sensitive, more, more empathetic. So you create that trust, trust. And so it's, it's little easier implementing it. But the test of it is the employee must trust. So that's why we always say managers, particularly HR managers, must establish themselves as 9-9 nine -nine managers on a grid of 9-9. Nine -nine. One is the business need, the other is the people need. It is not that if you do a business need, the people need has to be neglected, nor that when you take care of the people that the business will be neglected. You should have that strength that capability, that commitment to do both together. So on a grid of nine, nine, you can be six, six, seven, six, eight, seven. You can do both. You can do both. So that's the new age manager. They can do both. So they can take tough decisions. Still employees accept those decisions. They take care of employees out of the way and the business does not get affected. Right. So that's it. So you also mentioned that it's very important for leaders to be empathetic. 
So when uh, leaders are driven by empathy, how do you think they positively influence the employee well-being, their you know, mental health? Sometimes burnout syndromes happen. They're overloaded with work. Managers feel really exhausted with work. So how does that help in this case? Just to build a conceptual clarity on this empathy. Empathy is the ultimate negative form with no feelings for the others. Sympathy is recognizing the pain the other person is growing, whereas empathy is feeling the pain the other person is growing. This is the ultimate. If, an, if a superior can practice this, getting to the shoes of others, seeing the things from the other person's lens, appreciating the perspective of others, and for a minute, feeling the other fellow is feeling at the moment. If you can do that, you buy the hearts of people. Yeah. Buy the hearts of people. When a superior listens to his colleague with empathy, how it helps him. See, it relieves of his stress. He gets relaxed. Some people will get relieved of the pain. And once that happens, it works both psychologically and mentally. So I always have seen that leaders listening to people empathetically, they have helped employees in maintaining their physical and mental health, mental health. So it's a very good way of helping person be mentally stable, balanced, and healthy when in case of his adversity or a difficulty or a pain, the superior and superior superiors, they listen to us with this empathy. So it's a wonderful way of helping people maintain both physical and mental health. Right. I completely agree. But Dr. Rao, don't you think this concept of listening leadership, it's comparatively newer if we compare it to the traditional approach of leaders, which was even though the process of decision making was democratic, but the final say of the leaders was autocratic, right? So if we compare it to that, how do you uh, think that the managers today, the you know leaders today, they can be trained effectively in order to collaborate with the employees yeah. and go ahead? True, true. See, yeah, whether it in the past or present, we have different styles of leadership. Right. In the past also we had listening leaders. Even today also we got autocratic leaders. Our job is to help leaders and managers first appreciate what is listening leadership, see the benefits of listening leadership and learn the listening leadership. So it's three levels. So just to awareness, buying the rationale of doing it. Third is the ability to do that. So training becomes very important. In fact, uh, when we give weightages to in the potential appraisal, we say that he's very strong in communication. Right. We should say he's strong in listening. So the moment you have these kind of practices in organization, people will improve their listening skills. The second is, it's very difficult to keep quiet and keep shut. So we have to give them those skills of staying calm, staying silent. So the one, I, I can give you a few things like, you know, if you practice asking questions and wait for a detailed answer, so in the process you listen and develop listening. You will enjoy actually. This is one. Number two, you do town halls. And then you structure in such a manner that you speak for 50% of the time, 50%, you just let people say what they want to say. Third, you do skip level meetings. When I meet my immediate boss, there is always this apprehension, always a dilemma whether I should tell him everything or not. When I do a skip level meeting, boss is boss, I will be a little more free to say that. So. Skip level meeting. Another is 360 feedback. 
So when you do it 360 trade back in an anonymous manner, when you ask people for their views, they will do it. Last I will tell you, a company called HPCL, they ran a competition called HPCL Aparajit. It is people who failed in experimenting, they have failed, and but they have learned, they will make a presentation. The best presentation got the trophy. So in the organization, you are not only encouraged to experiment and you fail, you are encouraged to share your experiences of learning. So in the process, what you do is, instead of hiding yourself, instead of you know, avoiding, you come forward and share. So these are all certain practices where you, know, you encourage the ability, the competence of the leaders and managers in practicing listening. So even, I mean, the last thing I will tell you, I know about organization, they conducted uh, sessions on keeping quiet. So we call it Maun Brat. So how long you can keep quiet? No? So even that's also practice. Uh, but then the best is I have seen, ask simple questions like, how are you? And wait for the answer. Don't go away. It's not a hollow eye. Mm-hmm. How are things? Wait for the answer. He may talk about production. He may talk about service. He may talk about the organization. He may talk about family. How are things? Last, you say, how can I help you? So he'll wait. No, if you just wait, he will tell you how can you help you. He may need some resources. He may need some guidance. He may need some support. So it could be anything. So if you ask questions, pause. Then they will talk. Then in the process, you listen. So these are some of the practices I have seen. People practicing, I to an extent, I practice. And it works. And so we can give this competence to people. But then provided they are willing. Some great tips on how to build a collaborative work environment, Dr. Rao. So Dr. Rao, any last piece of advice for the employers, the employees watching this video? Oh, (laughs) I'll be happy to do that. So this uh, listening cannot be learned after you do graduation and go to a college. This should be built at the family level, at the school level. So teachers should listen to the students. So they they will see, oh, that's the value of listening. At home, the parents listen to the children. Then in the colleges, I mean, that's the best time because just before getting into an entrepreneurship or a job or a career, so that is the time. Your sincerity and seriousness is at the highest. No, You, You are in a learning mode. If at that time in engineering colleges and the business colleges and other universities, if you can take listening as one important elective. Tell people the <clears throat> about what is listening, what is the benefit of listening, how listening can be practiced. If you can give this competence to people at that level. So when they come to the corporate world, the karma world, so it's easier for developing further and nurturing it. Nurturing it. So, so it has to be an all-inclusive. Oh, this is something all at all levels we should work on this and uh, listening should be seen as a virtue and a very effective virtue and it's also very beneficial virtue and it's an impactful virtue thank you well, thank you mr rao